Welcome back to the game plan. Noah Muller here. A big week of the NFL just went over as week six has just passed. Two huge trades, a lot of good games. Let's get into it. So the first game I'm going to recap is the Sunday night football game where the Cincinnati Bengals defeated my New York Giants 17-7. to um, First of all, first and foremost, the defense played really well, so I'm not going to get on them for that. They played a really good game against the Cincinnati offense who, no matter how bad Cincinnati's record is, they're considered a top 5, top 10 offense. But our offense was just, it was really bad. As the stats go, Daniel Jones for 205 yards and one interception. Tyrone Tracy Jr., the um, rookie running back, going for 107 total yards and a touchdown. And then for the Bengals, Joe Burrow went for 208 passing yards and a 47-yard rushing touchdown at the start of the game. And T. Higgins went for seven receptions for 77 yards. And, I mean, again, it's just the offense playing horrible. I get that one really bad play on defense where Joe Burrow got the big runoff and scored. But, I mean, it was mainly the problem was um, our offensive um drives and it's got to be better it's unacceptable how bad this offense is and on paper this team isn't even bad it's just how the quarterback plays and Daniel Jones I will say it and say it again he needs to be done after this year no matter how good he looks when Malik Neighbors comes back he needs to be done because we saw this game and maybe the game versus Seattle he got a little break but we've seen throughout these in the past six years He's not the quarterback that's going to take us to the playoffs or the Super Bowl. It's not going to happen. This team did not play good at all. Moving on here to the second game, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Chicago Bears in London. And the Jags are officially the worst team in the NFL. The one game we thought they were going to win in London, they get demolished. And it's a common theme for the Jaguars this year. They haven't won a game yet. Uh, nobody on this team has really played that well because sides and sometimes the rookie Brian Thomas Jr. has had his moments, but even he was shut down this game. Chicago wins 35-16. Stat line goes Caleb Williams, 226 passing yards, four passing touchdowns and one interception. And Cole Komet goes for five receptions, 70 yards and two touchdowns, as well as Keenan Allen having two touchdowns. And for the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence goes for 234 passing yards, two touchdowns, one interception. And Evan Ingram going for 10 receptions for 102 yards. I mean, there are flashes on this Jacksonville team. There are good players on this team, but they just can't put it together this year, and it shows by their record. And obviously, they're definitely not going to the playoffs, but I mean, hopefully they win a game before the year ends because with this good of a roster, it's unacceptable to be this bad of a football team. To our third game of this episode, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeating its division rival New Orleans Saints 51-27. to most points Bucks have scored since 2019. And the Bucks, I get it. The Saints had their backup quarterback in. But, I mean, still, it's the same Saints team that's been winning all these games. And the Bucks look dominant. They look like, I say right now, they look like a top-five team in this league. I mean, the stat line goes Baker Mayfield, 325 passing yards, four passing touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, Spencer Rattler, the rookie for um, New Orleans, going for 243 passing yards, one passing touchdown, two interceptions. And then the two stars for this Buccaneers team, Chris Godwin going for 11 receptions, 125 receiving yards, two touchdowns. And then Sean Tucker going for 192 total yards and two total touchdowns. And the Bucks offense just dominated this game. I mean, they were able to spread around the ball very well. Mike Evans is in his slump versus the Saints that he's always been in, but everyone else really did their part. I mean, the two players I mentioned, you had Buck Irving, you had... Um, the tight end, Kate Otten, getting in the end zone. Everyone truly did their job. This team win for Tampa, and, I mean, they're moving to next week. They're moving this season. But moving on to the fourth game of the week, we have the Lions demolishing the Cowboys. Amazing. Coming and uh, seeing this as a Giants fan. Lions win 47-9. to nine. The stat line going, Jared Goff, 315 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. 
and uh, David Montgomery going for 80 rushing yards and two touchdowns. As for the Cowboys, Dak went for 178 and two interceptions, and C.D. Lamb went for seven receptions for 89 yards, and Cowboys look terrible. Officially, I don't have them in the playoffs. They look like a really, really not synchronized football team this year, and I mean, that's showing for everybody in the NFC East besides the commanders who came out of nowhere. I mean, the Eagles don't look good whatsoever. I mean, they won this week, but barely, and I don't even think their coach is on the same page as the team. Dallas has shown time and time again how fraudulent they are, and the Giants obviously have been the Giants this year. And I know the Lions are a good team, but with how good the Dallas roster is, it really shouldn't be this bad, especially given the fact they paid CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott huge contracts before the season started. And I think it's really starting to backfire on them. Going now to our top five players of the week. At number five, I got Jared Goff for 315 yards and three passing touchdowns. I mean, he really just led this Lions offense this entire game. You know, a dominating game, dominating performance for this offense. And such a great game for Jared Goff. And the Lions, another team that's moving. I mean, I have them top three right now. They're... An amazing team. They're finally synchronizing, getting it all together again like they have had it last season. And, I mean, it's a dangerous team, Detroit. Number four, I have Zay Flowers from the Baltimore Ravens going for nine receptions for 132 yards. I mean, really, the commander's only issue is the secondary, and they were able to really utilize that. Zay Flowers cooked the secondary of Washington, and he had one of the best games he's ever had, if not the best game he's ever had in his career. Uh, at number three, I have Derrick Henry from the Baltimore Ravens going for 132 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. De King Henry just continuing to dominate every single week against any team that he faces. I mean, this is the true offensive player of the year right here. When you look at it from, st from stat-wise and just watching the games, he's dominating every single defense, no matter who they have on the defense or what team they are. And, I mean, he's really came in and benefited this Baltimore offense. At number two, I have Chris Godwin from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going for 11 receptions, 125 yards, and two touchdowns. Chris Godwin continues to show that he's one of the best receivers in the NFL when he's healthy. I mean, this is a season-breaking performance from Chris Godwin, something that really puts the Buccaneers over the top if he can continue to stay healthy and play this well. And like I said earlier, the Buccaneers have been a top-five team this year easily. But our player of the week and number one is going to be Sean Tucker, running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Backup running back, actually. You know, Rashad White injured this week, so Bucky Irving and Sean Tucker both stepped up. But Sean Tucker with 192 total yards and two touchdowns. It's unheard of from a backup running back to do this kind of thing uh, to a defense, the caliber of the Saints especially. I mean, it just and when your whole team can connect like this where the backup running back has the most yards from the team and in the entire league that week i mean it's something else to be able to incorporate um that many players and it's full credit to tampa's offensive coordinator he's ran a, a great game plan all season long and it's definitely been working for them and the final topic of the day my week seven upset might be a little biased here but i have the giants winning against the eagles at home next week you know, as good as the Eagles roster looks, as bad as the Giants roster looks at some points, the Eagles have been playing terrible. They got A.J. Brown back last week. Last week we expected domination because it's the Cleveland Browns. They, they won by four points. They won 20-16. to 16. Jalen Hurts has not looked good. Saquon has been cooling down from his first two or three weeks. And this Eagles team looks very, very beatable right now by any team. And the Giants should be getting Malik Neighbors and Devin Singletary back this upcoming week. So, I mean, what stops them realistically? So that'll be my upset pick for the week. I'm going to go the score being 23-20, to 20, Giants winning on a game-winning field goal. That'll be it for the game plan. Next episode will be all MLB. I'll go over the current games played in the ALCS and NLCS and my predictions for the rest of that, as well as who I think will make the World Series and what the scores will be. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.